World Parks Congress in Sydney, and I'm with Sean. How are you doing, Sean? I'm tired, but um, you're making me <laughs> laugh, so that's good. <laughs> so, uh, Sean, you are the president of the Green Line Foundation. I'm oh, president of the International Ranger Federation and founder and director of its charity, um, the Thing Green Line Foundation. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Right. Could you explain what it is that you guys do? It's pretty simple. Basically, we uh, respect the park rangers around the world by actually giving them the equipment and support they deserve. And also, we don't forget about their widows and orphans left behind. We've, we've had over a 1,000 rangers killed that we know of in the last 10 years. And um, I mean, it's probably, it could be double. Uh, we're just getting the information. I've been doing this for seven years now and active in, internationally for 10. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a, these rangers are on the front line of conservation. And I think most decent people on the planet want our species and forests protected. And all the policy decisions that are made at the end of the day, it all comes down to the front line of rangers and their communities. Many of our rangers are community members themselves, indigenous people quite often. Um, and yeah, we put them on that front line, but often we don't give them the resources, the training to defend themselves from heavily armed poachers or just to do their job. So it's pretty basic. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you talk about poachers, I mean, can you describe these kind of guys? Are they, are they heavily armed? Are they yeah. You know, what are they like? Well, the poaching question is really interesting. So we've got everything from the heavily armed militia, uh, which we've had in one instance uh, 5,000 militia come into a park and take it over. Um, I've personally watched in Congo where um, a ranger was killed, and I got there, he'd been killed, but before he was killed, he was captured, tortured, stabbing with being stabbed in the nerve points by the militia and then kicked in the head till he died and the reason we know that is because his colleagues the other 50 rangers who were on patrol they had to escape because they were outgunned by 500 um, and then unfortunately their friend got captured and the rangers were watching with binoculars to see the fate of their friend and the um, poachers did this on purpose to terrorize the rangers and said this is what will happen to you they buried their colleague that same day i was at the funeral and uh you know, the widow and the orphan don't have any compensation except for what we're now doing and other people are getting involved. And, um, yeah, it's, we send them out there, so, but we don't respect their families. The kids are out of school and, uh, as a result and destined for poverty for the rest of their lives. Uh, that's a thanks we give to the people that risk their lives for endangered mountain gorillas or elephants or tigers or, you know, the list goes on. Uh, and then the poachers go all the way right down to subsistence poachers, which is just trying to feed their family. And quite often the rangers are, can be sympathetic to them because they're often in the same boat, in that they're starving or they don't have enough money or um, a basic wage to live off. And then you've got everything in between that. So you've got, yeah, you've got the subsistence just trying to survive, right through to the building up to commercial poachers, aspirational poaching, want to make more money, right through to the hardcore militia. Right. And what's the, uh, so we're, you're talking here basically that the, the breadwinner is taken out of the family. Yeah, yeah, the breadwinner's gone. I mean, we had a case in Zambia where both um, uh, parents were rangers and both had died. And uh, the, la the female ranger Zam uh, in Zambia, Esna Pundi was her name, and um, she caught two poachers with her colleague and they were doing the arrest. But because they didn't have the basic training, they didn't do a clearance area around the poaching to make sure there was no one else, and the poacher jumped out. This happens far too often. I read too many times. I get reported two or three deaths a week. Um, jumped out of the bush, hit the male ranger in the head with the machete. He went down presumed dead, so she ran out number three to one now. Um, but they didn't just let her go. They tracked her, found her hiding, and chopped her up with a machete. And William Soko, who was here at this Congress, he's the, manager, the ranger in charge that found her body in that condition and, um, you know, very distressing for the family, of course, and, and mm. for the rangers. And Anyway, she had four kids. They're now double orphaned. No support for the family. And we're putting those kids through school. I'm like, we just, okay, we're just all the way through school, double orphaned. That's um, fantastic of you. Yeah. So how did you come up with the concept of the Green Line Foundation? Um, that was good atmospheric music. <laughs> good. Um, Perfect in Australia. Well, the concept came out just by total need. Um, the, I actually went to, I was in the International Ranger Federation, which has been going for a while, um, and I decided, I sold my car and remortgaged my house and went around the world for a year to make a film I didn't know how to make. <laughs> my brother, the film called? The Thin Green Line. Right. Uh, and I was just borrowed from the RF newsletter. Um, and I was, I always said, I'll, whatever money I raise, I'll give it back 
to the widows and orphans. And I went to hand it to the then president of the IRF and said, there you go, some of it anyways, there's more coming. And he said, oh, we're not set up as a charity. Um, we're a representative body, but this, we want to do this work. You have to set up the charity arm. And I went, yeah, I do. Because this is, I've, I've been, I'd traveled around the world and saw what was going on. And I just happened to sit on the plane and there's a lawyer sitting next to me who liked what I was doing and he helped me set it up and making it sound really easy, but it was <laughs> As I said before, we went over a waterfall at that point when we started and I feel like I've been going down the rapids ever since. And I suppose this conference makes me feel like we actually came up for a breath of fresh air and we've got a lot of people holding us up now, the, you know, the organisations, but the rangers and I think the spirit of the rangers has increased at this Congress. And I suppose the work really now starts to get those people who've showed a passioned, impassioned uh, voice for us and let's actually get them to kick in now and let's support the Rangers. It's not enough just to respect them, let's do that, maintain that, but let's dig into the pockets and in, into our legislations and into our consciousness and actually get behind these men, men and women on the front line. Okay, now what could the, the public do if they wanted to help? Could they make donations to you guys? Ah, oh, absolutely, yeah. So we've got tax status in um, Australia, UK and US so they can get behind us that way. Um, <laughs> Yeah, donations are always really well loved. I mean, $10, just $10 is enough to buy a Ranger mosquito net, which stops him getting malaria eight times a year. Um, five, time, five days off each time minimum, if, if sometimes they do get killed from uh, certain types of malaria. But $10 is enough to do that. We actually worked out from the 2,000 mosquito nets we gave out, just in saved Ranger time with days off from malaria, it equated to over 230 full-time Ranger positions. <laughs> so $10 will make a difference. $1,000 is what we give a widow, which is about, in many places, an annual salary for a widow. Um, but it's enough to put the kids back to school for a number of years, set up a small business and pay some immediate bills. Um, and then, of course, the larger donations, if there's people out there with that kind of coin, well, yeah, come and see us, because we'll put your money for good use. And do you have a domain name or website that they can uh, use? Yeah, um, so the charity arm is thingreenline.org.au and the International Ranger Federation is just internationalrangers.org if they want to get more information about joining the Ranger Federation. Um, but yeah, and then uh, or donating to that side of it because we need admin site support on, on the Ranger networking side and then the charity arm, thingreenline.org.au. Sean, thank you so much for your time. I guess it's time for a beer. Well, it is, and <laughs> coincidentally, there's a bird making a noise in the background. I think you should do your noise again. <laughs> Stop poachers. <laughs> thank you. Good on you, man. That was great.